Monsieur le secrétaire d'État, euh, mesdames, messieurs les professeurs, mesdames, messieurs, chers collègues, chers amis, chers chercheurs, um, speaking about a partnership seems uh, at the end of the day always dangerous. The transatlantic, uh, the draft transatlantic uh, project on trade and investment belongs to this uh, category, and it's a dangerous topic to some extent. How to speak? in a relevant way about what we don't really know except for very few uh, per people. And at the same time, it is necessary to discuss and debate about it before it is done, before the treaty is concluded. As an international lawyer, I don't believe that serious negotiation can be held in the open. As an international trade lawyer, I know that trade negotiations usually tend to be biased in favor of producers' interests and not consumers' interests. At the same time, I share what I think is a common concern of citizens that all interests at stake should be taken into account and possibly served, and not only the interests of the most efficient lobbies. My purpose, of course, is not to write suspicion about the negotiation, but I thought that it would be good to face from the very beginning of this conference the controversies that the draft TTIP attracts. This being said, our aim when we decided to organize this conference one year ago was twofold. First, in as much as our institute is in Luxembourg, wanted to focus on Luxembourgish interests regarding the TTIP. And this is the pur purpose of our first session this afternoon. And we tried as best as we can to attract speakers representing the various stakeholders. At a moment when the Prime Minister of Luxembourg, Xavier Bettel, proposes to create an S9, a group of nine small European countries, aimed not at counterbalancing the G8, but at helping the voices of these small countries to be, to be heard, we can consider that our conference is timely. And second, in as much as our institute focuses on procedural law, to reflect on the part of the treaty which is the closest to our field of expertise, namely dispute resolution, makes also our conference timely, because our day tomorrow will be devoted to the ISDS. And the nice thing is that the European Commission has had the very good idea to issue rather recently new propositions. And uh, the Commission issued its proposition uh, long before enough to allow some reflection, but recently enough to make our conference timely to discuss about these propositions. So all in all, I think, and it's a self-satisfaction, but it's good, that our conference is definitely timely. Thank you. Mr. Secretary of State, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, um, we are very proud that the conference of today is part of the official program of the Luxembourgish presidency. At the same time, it's one, it's a major event of the Institute's program of uh, this year. And it is also the first conference of a new format organized by this Institute. Um, as you already have heard, and you certainly know, um, this Institute is at the moment composed of two departments, one dealing with dispute resolution in international law, the other one in private international law, but there are many areas of common interest and uh, where the two uh, departments collaborate. And uh, the idea of Alain Ruiz Fabri and myself was to organize once per year a major conference which addresses common areas of research. And indeed, investment arbitration, investment protection is uh, a very good topic in this respect. And I think the Max Planck Institute Luxembourg here is the right place to engage in this public debate which uh, has uh, reached uh, uh, such, such a large scale. Um, as you might have seen, uh, this uh, conference has attracted a certain uh, interest. Uh, we have many guests. We had even asked our collaborators to stay in another room where 
uh, a video stream is uh, shown in order to have some place also here in, in this room. And I would like to inform you that we are making a, a video of this conference, which can also be accessed via our website and uh, by YouTube. Well, I already said that this is a, a conference of a new format of the Institute. And what I can announce here um, that uh, we are going to organize similar events uh, in the future. And we have already reflected on topics like state insolvency or even the dispute settlement uh, regimes after the big peace treaties concluded after the First World War. So it might be not the, the only uh, occasion to come to this institute. And we are hopeful that uh, you will make it in the close future. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, welcome again. Thank you for coming. And I would like to invite Secretary of State Mark Hansen for his welcome again. So, dear directors of the Max Planck Institute Luxembourg, dear participants, ladies and gentlemen, I am uh, particularly pleased to welcome you to this conference here at the premises of the Max Planck Institute Luxembourg for Procedural Law. The present event, which takes place in the context of Luxembourg's presidency of the EU Council, confirms that the Max Planck Institute Luxembourg is certainly a young but even more dynamic institution which fully contributes to the diversification and complementarity of the higher education and research landscape of our country. As you know, the national research system in Luxembourg is also quite young. Public research expenditure has substantially grown since the year 2000 and in 2003 Luxembourg created its first and sole university the University of Luxembourg. Its scientific performance has progressed very rapidly and is now above EU average. This is mainly due to policy of attracting outstanding researchers because we want to make Luxembourg a hub for excellent research and we want to attract the best researchers to Luxembourg and keep them in Luxembourg. All these efforts of building and strengthening and efficient and high quality research systems are part of a higher level political strategy in order to diversify the national economy while maintaining a competitive financial sector. In the aftermath of the crisis, it has become widely acknowledged that diversification can help to strengthen economic resilience and mobilize new sources of growth notably through research-driven economic activities. Therefore, research is very high on the political agenda in Luxembourg. After a period of rapid expansion, especially in public research and substantial reforms in the organization and governance of the research system and its main institutional actors, Luxembourg has now entered a period of consolidation. Internationalization of the national research system is pivotal in this consolidation phase, allowing tapping into excellence across the globe. The European Framework Program for Research and Innovation called Horizon 2020 is the way per excellence to internationalization of research. Ladies and gentlemen, it was in 2009 that the Luxembourgish government signed a cooperation agreement with the Max Planck Gesellschaft zur Förderung der Wissenschaften in order to set up the present institute. This agreement was completed in 2012 by a funding contract. The related law of 25th November 2014 provided a clear legal basis with a yearly institutional funding of maximum 12 million euros and made it thus fully compliant with the Luxembourgish legislative and constitutional framework, procedural law oblige. 
The institute is the first Max Planck Institute on legal matters outside the German borders. It has started its work in autumn 2012 here at this temporary location. As you all know, the government has taken in June this year this, the decision that the Max Planck Institute Luxembourg will find its permanent place at the Campus Kirchberg of the University of Luxembourg. This choice is likely to stimulate and to enhance the exchange and cooperation with the university's faculty of law, economics and finance, which will be settled at the same location. At the same time, the institute will continue to benefit from the proximity of European courts and institutions. Ladies and gentlemen, I do not have to tell you that TTIP, the subject of this conference, is a highly debated topic in many EU countries, including in Luxembourg. As a matter of fact, never before has the EU trade policy been the subject of such passionate and sometimes heated debates. The exchange of different views, the openness to other opinions, the readiness to deal with criticism and to take benefit from controversy in order to reach a better result are undoubtedly some of the main principles of democratic societies. It is clear, however, that the democratic debate and the related decision-making process are only effective if they can rely on scientifically or at least objectively established facts. That's what we commonly call evidence-based policymaking. Dear participants, this is exactly the approach that has been chosen for the present event. During the upcoming round table discussion, you are going to have a constructive and truly very edifying exchange of views on the expectations and challenges of TTIP, whereas tomorrow's session will gather eminent experts to discuss the more specific problem of investor state dispute settlement, which will allow all of us, that's to say the stakeholders, the decision makers, as well as the representatives of civil society, to broaden our reflections and to further our understanding of this complex topic. In this sense, ladies and gentlemen, it only remains for me to wish you some very stimulating and fruitful discussions. But before passing the floor to the roundtable participants, please allow me to convey my warmest thanks to the organizers of this conference who offer us the opportunity to hold a high-level scholarly debate on a controversial topic. As I said before, through initiatives like this, Max Planck Institute Luxembourg confirms that in a very short period of time, it has already become a major actor in Luxembourg's academic landscape. Thank you very much for your attention.